How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Stand Focus for Jesus and Women Stand Focus for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So we got the wife on this one. Let me let my seat up a little bit so I can get a little comfortable. Um, we got the prince in the back seat. He sleep, which is good, so he won't be making a whole bunch of noise. And usually, he doesn't. But um, I just start I started I started to um, well we're starting a new series or whatever you want to call it where we're going to be talking about marriages or marriage but you understand what I'm saying um, relationships uh, different things that we've went through with relationships past relationships our present relationship um, different things that we go through in regards to marriage in general and this is the first of first official video of it. Can't get my words right. So if I'm kind of like everywhere, if we're everywhere is because we don't have a script that we're going by. Um, it's a question I posed to her, and I told her, "Don't give me her answer." And so the question that I posed was, "What is the hardest thing about marriage?" And so. We're going to let her go first, and then I'm going to go out the words, and then we'll probably get into some more stuff as some questions and stuff come, comes to my mind. So with that being said, you got the people listening. Um, this is, you could say, the uh, the female pastor of Women Stand Focus for Jesus. She's not over men, so let's get that right. But uh, she is the person that is over Women Stand Focus for Jesus with me being over that and Christ being over Stand focused for Jesus and women stand focused for Jesus. You know how it goes. So let's get to it. Let's get to the good stuff. So I'm going to answer that question with a question. <laughs> Is this, what's the hardest part about marriage or the hardest part about our marriage? Because everybody's different. And I can only speak for, for our marriage. If I say marriage, period, you know, somebody will be like, well, my marriage, that ain't the hardest thing about me. You see how she being dealt with? Because, of course, we would be talking about our marriage okay but since she said that then we're gonna roll with that we're gonna we're gonna uh do a two-part question then okay since she said it we're gonna go with what's the hardest part about our marriage individually um and then we're gonna go with what is the perception that the world gives about what is the hardest thing about marriage and how we can correct that since we are in christ and we are married so Okay, so my opinion, the hardest part about marriage is is finances. Like people, for some reason, fight so much about finances. You know, money. Money tears people apart from what I've seen. And uh, I don't necessarily agree with that as far as our marriage. I don't think the hardest part about our marriage is money. So uh -huh. your response is, your first part of your response was in reference to what the world, the world's perceptive of. The hard thing about marriage is okay. Yeah, agreeing on agreeing on money, and that could be anything from um, bills. You know, what's uh what's the what's the priority? The husband might think, well, the priority is this. You know, I don't know. What do men think is important? Cars, stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Image, you know, right. the facade of yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing it. I mean. I'm pretty sure everybody would agree that they like to drive nice cars and have nice things. So, you know, a family, they, you have a wife and a child, a child or children. Um, and just, keep, and not enough money. I think that's a, that's a big, a big, uh, you can keep talking. I don't like the lightning right here, so I couldn't see. That's a big problem. I think is not enough money. Like there's not enough money to, for them to be happy because their, because their happiness is coming from material things. Their happiness is coming from, you know, what they got. You know, we don't have, we don't live in the kind of house we want to live in. We don't drive the kind of cars we want to drive. Our children don't go to the type of school we want them to go to. Um, so, bottom line, is money. People, you know, celebrities break up behind money. You know, a lot of a lot of people' problems is money. So that's what I would say. The world's perception is. And now I, w I would agree with that because the Bible does tell us that the love of money is the root of all evil. And I don't think that we have a complete 
understanding of that. We 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 hear it quoted all the time, but we don't actually, you know, peer past. Okay, what does this really mean? What's it really saying? You know, um, you think about what people actually do for money, and then what they do when they get it. From my experience, when you get more money, you get more prideful. Yes. You know, from just from a fleshly standpoint. Even even when the Lord did bless us with more finance, I still had to bring my my flesh into subjection. You know, when we was uh, doing, I was driving like, um, you know, going three or four times a week, and the checks were the checks were nice. And you know, it was like, yeah, you know, what we want to do, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go here. So we was enjoying that. So even when that was happening, I still had to bring my my flesh into subjection because the flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. I couldn't just be like, oh, yeah, I got I got some, some dollars coming in and, you know, the money looking good, and now all of a sudden, you, you know, it's not going to be a, a struggle. Um, it was also the same thing when the money stopped coming in, when, you know, I wasn't getting any driving jobs, and that, like, <laughs> cut, what, cut, you know, cut, the, cut all the finances, really, because yeah. that was a, a major part of our finances was me driving and my wife also driving, um, driving too. So we had, uh, you know, both incomes come again and just to give you an example. Um, you know, I don't really hide anything about, about a lot of stuff, whatever, you know, I share a lot. I know that, but meaning I'm not going to tell you all my personal business, <laughs> you know, everything, every intricate detail about my, 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 my life and everything that's going on. Um, but I'll tell y'all enough, um, in regards to what, whatever the topic is, but when we, a Florida trip, Pays about two hundred dollars for us, about two two twenty. So if both of us went, that would be almost five hundred dollars that we'd be getting in our household. So there was a stint where we didn't go on any driving jobs for over over a month. And you figure that if I go on two Miami trips, like we would literally go on me more so, I would literally go on about two Miami trips a week. That's four hundred something dollars, almost five hundred dollars by myself. And then my wife, I, if I'm able to take her, if I if I was able to take her, I mean that's a, that's a good little check that you know you're making pretty much for a day, a day and a half worth of work, and you get to go on vacation and stuff. Right, and it paid every week. Yeah, it was it was every week job, and then that like just like it was like yeah, and then it boom like it, it hit rock bottom where we was pretty much we were, we're still recovering from. That yeah, from not, not yeah, from not income. from not getting jobs because our income uh, was attached to that, which it's the benefits of being self-employed. But at the same time, being self-employed it has its perks and it has its you know it has is as you can say positive and negative. And if you don't get any work, then you literally you don't eat literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we could have we could have fell out behind that. Yeah. So yeah, that, I mean that's the point I was uh, getting to. That could have affected our marriage, but also for me personally, um, you know, I had to be humble. I had to be humble too. Still had to be humble on that. So you got to be humble when the Lord blesses you with abundance, and you also got to be humble when you're in the valley, because you know you're like, yeah, I was here. I'm. I used to be the man, and a lot of you, you know, my past. So my perception of my thinking of money, not even from a, a Christian standpoint, of course. That uh that really instilled in me to not be pursuing these things or whatnot. They're just tools, but because of my my past and me having money and stuff like that, um, you know, I, I grew up riding around in Mercedes Benz when you know I was I was knee high and I got pictures to show to prove that. So it's not nothing I'm making up. My wife she knows that too. Um, I grew up in Mercedes Benz and, and Volvos and and B and W and stuff like that. And it just as time went on, you know because of who my dad is and everything that he pursues, um, the cars just, they just happen to get better over time. Um, compared to, um, compared to my, my wife, you know, she would be considered, she would say in comparison to how I grew up, she would have said that she grew up poor. Definitely. Yeah. Um, we didn't ever have nice cars. We had hoopties from, from my whole life, from what I remember, I don't ever remember having a nice car. I remember us having multiple cars. Like, my mama had her own car. My daddy had his. But they were some busted vehicles. Like, I remember being shamed to go to school sometimes. Not shamed to go to school. I'd be shamed for them to drop me off at school or pick me up. I'd, be, I'd catch the bus because I, <laughs> I didn't want my classmates to see what, what kind of car we would, we had. 
but they eventually found out and of course they talked about me but you know what can you do about it you know i was a child and couldn't do nothing about it just take the you know take the teasing and keep it moving but i knew then as a child i knew like one day one day i'm not i'm not gonna have no raggedy car i'm not gonna have no raggedy house so i had it in my mind as a child that one day i'm gonna make sure that i'm not poor because i didn't like i didn't like getting teased and everything i mean now i'm grown and you know i've had i've had every pretty much everything i've wanted from back before before i got saved when i was in the air force i, I lived a pretty pretty nice lifestyle and it's nothing you know once you you had stuff and you know i, I don't care no more I don't care, you know. I don't care. Yeah, man. whatever we can drive, whatever, as long as it's running, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had nice cars. We've had together. We've had no bu regular, busted regular. cars. Yeah, I would I mean, say regular. I wouldn't say busted. You know, maybe most recent purchase. Busted in comparison. Comparison I mean, to what we had. Yeah. I mean, if you think, of, I mean, it's, it, I would, yeah, you're right. I mean, it would really be all per perception. Right, perception. Because I mean, I wouldn't consider Big Betty. You know, the truck I had, I, I wouldn't consider her right. busted, but in comparison to this vehicle, which is a, you know, a brand, new, brand new vehicle, you could right. you could say it's busted. All right. Or in comparison to the Camaro, you could say that that was that the truck was busted in comparison to the Camaro. Yeah, which yeah. you know I don't even have that anymore. My brother now has the has a Camaro, and the reason that I got rid of that because I I can't really can't afford it anymore. Um, because remember we're telling you about the time we were driving and stuff and everything. And that money was pretty much helping to pay for the, uh, the car payment. So it wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to try to stick this in here. We had the money coming in and we need another vehicle. So I ended up getting her this vehicle that we're currently in and then had more money coming in. And so I ended up, uh, trading, um, my truck, selling it to them, the dealership, which my dad works at and stuff. And then working out a pretty much an awesome deal, uh, let me add this too. It's, it's not always about what you're spending. You know, it's not always about the money. It's, it's literally, I'm starting to learn more and more. I guess it's becoming more of a uh, realization that it's about who you know. Because if you you saw me drive around in Camaro, you'd be like, oh man, you paid a lot of money for that. When in essence, mm -hmm. essence mm -hmm. I didn't really pay what you think I paid for it uh, because of my, who my dad is. He's a used car sales manager for AutoNation. So it was a matter of him working the numbers and everything. It's all about it's all about numbers and really it's all about who you know. Um, so because he was in that position, I was able I was able to benefit from that. Um, but uh, yeah, I got I got rid of it because I really can't afford it. And um, I guess you could say we're going through a different transition. We're doing together. We're doing different business stuff, which requires us to make more sacrifices. Which meant for me to get rid of my my car to in essence downgrade so I could have the extra income to put toward, um, um, you know, the business stuff that I'm doing, the business stuff that she's doing. She has some, um, some stuff that she, she's been working on and everything, but, uh, yeah. Um, part two of the question. Yeah. Part two, we go to part two. The hardest thing about our marriage. And this is personally. <laughs> To speak speak personally, and then if you want to go full circle, then you. I might have to pause it. I might be thinking for a minute. Um, the hardest part about our marriage. <laughs> She's not ready. I'm not ready because you know. Even though she Every, had like two weeks. I had like weeks. two weeks, yeah, maybe three weeks to think about it. Because, okay, I'm just to be honest. Our marriage is great. You know, our marriage is, is wonderful. And I, I'm not saying that, you know, I can't think of anything this this hard about it. Well, I mean, there will have to be some. I know, okay, when I think about like. Difficulties. I mean, I understand what, you, I understand what you're saying. It's like, it's difficult to love in this world because of the surrounding circumstances, but it's not hard to love because of love dwelling in us. So it's not, she, let me see if okay, I can the, okay, discern. Okay, no, I, I think I thought about it now. I, I think the hardest thing about our marriage for me is. I don't know that, what you're going to say. <laughs> no, I haven't told you because I just thought about it right now. The, maybe the, 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 let me word this right because I don't want you to take it the wrong way. 
the 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 losing the losing my the losing my independence my my being uh what is it called not my identity because i'm still me you know i haven't like lost my identity you know um i've done that before actually in relationships where i wasn't even married to the guy you know i lost my identity with a boyfriend but like i like you know, everything that I was doing before, you know, when you single, you do whatever you want to do, right? Like if I don't want to get up until 12, one o'clock, I don't have to. Well, being married, you can't do that. You know, you can't do that as a wife because that will, you know, you just can't like, I have to get up even before David was born. I can totally blame him now and say, well, of course I get up because of David. But even before that, you know, making sure that the house is clean, make sure the dishes are washed, you know, making sure that um, I got some food ready, just, you know, a, a lot of things that I have to do now and the things that he might want me to do, you know, I need you to do this and I need you to do that. You know, just doing, th being required to do, to do things to take care of duties as a wife that I didn't have to do before being single. Being single, you don't have to do anything. Nobody can't make you do anything. And not saying that he makes me do anything, he doesn't make me, but as a wife, you know, the <laughs> if I want my, my household to run smoothly and peacefully, if he asks me to do something, then I need to do it in love. And if I, if, if I love him, like I say, I love him, I'm going to make sure he eats. I'm going to make sure the house is clean. I'm going to make sure things are taken care of. So the things that I have to do as a wife that I didn't have to do when I was single to me, that's, that's the hardest part. Just like, okay, I got to do this stuff and I got to do it. Not out of obligation, but I got to do it because I love him because I don't want to suck as a wife. I don't want to suck as a mother. So I got to do it. You know, I got to do it. And not because I think he's going to go make a video saying my wife sucks because she didn't do blah, blah, blah. Like I got to do it because I love him because that's, that's what I'm supposed to do. Like I know what I'm supposed to do and I, I got to do it. So to me, that's the hardest part. Like just doing all this stuff that I didn't previously have to do, you know? And I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's hard. I'm just saying that it's it's a lot, you know, compared to being single. You think about when you're single. When you're single, you don't have to do anything. You literally like when I was in Hollywood, I was living in my RV and I was working as a teacher. And every dollar I made, I spent it on whatever I wanted to get my hair done, buying clothes, blah, 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 blah. Well, now I'm a wife. I don't work. Well, I work from home, but I work like literally like an hour maybe three, three, four hours a week. Like I don't work enough to do anything as far as helping really for real, for real. So the money that I make now, the little, you know, hundred dollars every two weeks that I make now compared to, I used to make 15, no, maybe a thousand, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars every two weeks. I made a lot of money, you know, in Hollywood compared to now. So that's a big, big, <laughs> a big pay cut, you know, going from being single to being a wife. And so I would say that's probably the hardest part to me. Just, okay, now I got to, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm under, I'm under you. I'm not, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you can explain it better than what I'm trying to say. Just, just not be, not being that independent, but it wouldn't even feel right, honestly, for me to go back to be a wife and to try to do what I was doing before wouldn't feel right. It just wouldn't. Cause then I feel like I'm in charge and that's just not going to work. So, so I don't know. Does anything I said make sense? I mean, not really for you to try to. I noticed that women do that a lot. Does that they, make sense? they they explain themselves and they're like, does it make sense? I mean, I, I don't know. I know it may sound crazy. It may sound crazy. Because I but... understand what I'm trying to say. I just make sure you understand what I'm trying to say. Like, do you get it? Yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, from this is what I discern from what she said. The hardest thing about being married is the bigger. The biggest sacrifice that she had to make. Thank you. See, that was so easy. He could have just answered it for me. <laughs> the, the, it, it required a bigger sacrifice, which yeah. in itself was hard because she had already sacrificed to get to me because she couldn't get to me unless she was in Christ. So that was a sacrifice in itself. But she had to even give more of herself to receive more of a blessing because she would say that I'm a, a blessing. Definitely. Um, and I would say that she's a, she's a blessing to me. Or whatnot. So it required her to sacrifice more. It required her to have more patience. Because, you know, it says he who finds a good wife. So we know from a biblical perspective that the um, the man is supposed to go out and, and find the uh, find that, 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 that good gift that God has for him. 
but it also requires patience on the on behalf of the woman because it may be 30 some years it may be 40 years you know a woman doesn't know even a man doesn't know what 30 some years would wait waiting. waiting for a spouse yeah i mean okay. a totality of life life of course you're not looking for us when you're two or three years old right. but, but you, yeah, know, you look at the saying. totality of the picture um waiting all these years for uh for a husband because you know that's the way that god has structured it um so yeah i understand what you're saying it required more sacrifice which ultimately has everything to do with the lord Lord, mm-hmm. which required more of you which makes it hard you're like oh you know but it's uh, but it's beautiful yes. because because of the the preparation that the lord had already taken me through before i'd even met you mm-hmm. like a lot of things like moving back home like i wasn't living at home When I first got saved, I was in California. I was single by myself. And then I moved to Arkansas where my parents were at and my grandmother was at. And I literally every day I'm I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm taking I'm helping take care of my grandma, not like me solely because there was other people there, too. But I was doing a lot of things that I wasn't doing in California. I didn't have to do, you know, I didn't have to cook. Like I literally if you ask (laughs) some of my homegirls, you know, they would tell you like April, she's like. When I come to visit you in California, you didn't have any food that, you know, you could cook. I didn't. Like, I, my refrigerator was full of vegetables. I mean, not vegetables. Full of fruits, like strawberries, plums, apples, pineapples, watermelon, stuff that you just eat right then in there. Crackers and cheese. Like, you know, so because because of how busy I was, I didn't really have time to be cooking like that. But that was cool because I was single. And then fast forward, moving to Arkansas with my parents and my grandmother, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm literally like nonstop the whole time I was there. And then I ended up getting two jobs as um, a cashier and a teacher. So I'm working like nonstop. And then the Lord brings my future husband into the picture. And, and also as a teacher, I'm teaching little children, like from, I guess you could say six weeks old up to four years old. And then I became like a full-time teacher where I had my own classroom teaching two-year-olds. And so I had no idea that the Lord was preparing me for being a wife and a mother. But somebody at my job did tell me that. They were like, you know, this could be good preparation for you. (laughs) And I thought about it. I was like, yeah, it could be. And then, you know, a year later, yeah, we got married. And so what was I saying? I was saying that, that, yeah, it might be hard, the sacrifice, uh, being single or being married and being a wife, but the Lord had prepared me. And that's one thing that if you're watching this and you are single or you're looking to be married, the preparation part is super duper important. It's super important. Not just, you know, Lord, send me a spouse, send me a spouse, send me a spouse. Like you need to be praying, Lord, prepare me for a spouse. Cause if he sends you one, you ain't ready. You're not probably not going to see that person. Or if you do meet them, they're not going to, they're going to be like, well, they ain't ready. You know? So anyway, that's all I got. Um, I didn't expect that answer. I didn't know. I didn't know. I really didn't know what this, but I didn't give myself any expectations. I think she might be surprised at my answer. <laughs> uh, the I hardest, the hardest thing about marriage. Wait, let me swallow. <laughs> the hardest thing about marriage <laughs> is me. No, no I'm nah. See, she, she, she. <laughs> She's going to be shocked at my answer. She's probably going to look at me on camera. The hardest thing about marriage. Wait, marriage or our marriage? Our marriage. Okay. We, I think we are. We pretty much address from a worldly perspective. I think we both agree on that. As far as what the finances and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The hardest thing about marriage, about our marriage, for me is myself. <laughs> See? See, is is dealing dealing with myself because I know me, I understand me, and she's you know she's still learning me, and I'm still learning her. And I say that because you know me pretty well, though. It's I mean, scary. It's scary, like how well he knows me, and we only married for two years. I mean, it's because you know I, I also had to give him discernment, so it's kind of like. Like a advantage, right? It's like it's like we got married, and he it, I came with a a pamphlet, a book, or something. Like he always figured me out, and I don't even know how he did that. But anyway, go ahead. Um, yeah, the hardest part about our marriage is dealing with myself because of you know, I mean, it kind of like ties back to what you said. Interesting, just thinking about it. Um, what it requires, 
And I'm demanding of myself because the Lord is demanding of me because I want to be used by the Lord. And she'll tell you that, like, I'm, I ask for a lot, but the stuff that I ask for, it's not like I'm asking for it in vain. I'm asking for it because I see a bigger, a bigger purpose for it. So I'm hard on myself because I want to make sure that I'm giving my full effort, not only in the Lord, but also in our marriage was it's in the Lord. And so I can be demanding of her and I have to find the right, I want to say balance, but I mean, I guess you could, you could use that word. Um, sometimes I, sometimes my demanding can get fleshly and I may say something in a way that's not, uh, spiritual. I mean, it's not, it's not motivated by love. My intent may for it to may for it to be that way, but it may not come out that way because I've gotten to the, in the flesh. And so through the marriage, I've had to, I mean, do what she, she has been praying for, for me to be more patient. I told y'all, you know, patience isn't my, my strongest suit. Um, be more patient, be more, more gracious because it's like, I'm in the seat of Christ and I'm not saying that I'm Christ. Understand what I'm saying? I'm in the seat of Christ and she is in the seat of, of me. Meaning when I look at her, I have to look at her in essence of how Christ looks at me. In the same me way, the head, me yeah, the body, like the body of Christ, yeah, the, per, the yeah, bride, per, the per, bride, yeah, perfect example, perfect example. So, you know, with me being the head and everything, I have to make decisions that she may not always agree with, or I have to, you know, what I'm saying, um, or make decisions because she may not be able to see what I can see. In the same way that I, it prepared how I treat her, it also prepared me for how to treat my son. So I have to balance or bring in to subjection my flesh more to meet the requirements that God has uh, given me to meet as far as being a, a preacher, bring, being a teacher, bring, being a, a, a husband, being a, a, a father, a being, being, a, you know, a businessman. I know a lot of stuff from my, my plate. I mean, y'all, some of y'all know that cause you, you emailed me and say, Hey, I know you got a lot in your plate, blase, blase. Um, but you know, I always try to make time to talk to the people. You know, I always try to make time to talk to y'all. You know, I don't always get back with the emails immediately because I do have a lot going on. It's not that I'm purposely ignoring y'all, but I'm also, you got to remember that I'm also going through my, my growth process too, as, as I'm growing as, as you're growing. So I'm making mistakes. I'm learning how to do things, do things differently and whatnot, um, through the spirit. So the hardest thing again, for me in our marriage is dealing with myself, <laughs> Because I know how, how I am. I mean, she 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 makes it she makes it easier because she doesn't, you know, saying when she sees I'm going through something or I'm in my my moment or whatever, you know, she isn't lashing back. She goes into prayer mode and she sends a prayer and the Lord come and give me a two piece with a, with a biscuit. <laughs> you know, get it right. You better, walk. you know, what I'm saying that, that then that conviction conviction sets in. So me being married to her. It helps to helps to for my job to be easier. So she would think that the hardest part is her, but and I'll actually actually the hardest part for me is me dealing with me because I know how, how I am. But she helps me to deal with myself, so I can be the person that God has called me to be. So I can be the person that y'all need me to be, be the person that she needs me to be, be the person that my son needs me to be, and. You know, just be the person that the world needs me to be. Because people that are lost don't know that they need you. But in essence, in reality, we, we all need each other. You know, we're not we're not independent. We're independent, but we're not independent from each other. We all we all need each other. I need my wife. Didn't know it before, but now I have a bigger, bigger picture. The reason the Lord one of the main reasons the Lord wanted me to get married is so that I could grow as a man so I could have a, a deeper understanding of, 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 of family and what God, how God really sees family and what it, what it really means to him. So I can, I can, through me having, through us having a son, my relationship with Christ has deepened that much more because David is literally me, <laughs> not just for my seed, but I'm like, I learned so many lessons just by looking at him I'm like, Oh, I see what you're saying, Lord. That's me right there. Then, you know what I'm saying? He's learning, he's growing, he's, he's experiencing stuff more. 
You know, he he get he get popped because the boy the boy is intelligent. The boy the boy is smart. He's he's smart, and that's just not for me saying it because I'm biased because of my son. But um, but that's from other people too. You know, saying that and everything. Like I don't know the difference because this is my first child, so I'm like, well, this is what I expect. So in the same way, I expect him to just be smart. When people say, oh, he's smart for his age. I'm like, well, that's what I expect. God is the same way. Well, this is what I expect from from you. This is what I expect from from you or whatnot. So you know, I literally see myself in in essence of I mean in um, in the sense of um, like me as as a, as a Christian growing. It's like it's like I'm living I'm living my growth as a baby Christian up into you know can't really say the point now, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, through him, it's like it's being replayed, and so I'm, may, I'm like, I'm the lessons that I maybe I didn't learn. I'm now getting a better understanding of those lessons through him. Oh, you may have missed this lesson on mercy, but I'm going to teach you more mercy through your son because guess what? He's 18, 19 months years old. I can't drop the hammer on him at 19 months year, 19 months, 19 months year old, <laughs> 19 months old. I can't drop the hammer on him, but I can. Hey, let me come, come talk. Let me come talk to you. Like when I talk to him, the boy understands. He listens. He, he, he listens. He knows. What like no, don't don't let me. You don't do that. Like you know, he got he get the hands and the, like boy, who who you think you hitting? Like you, he will get mad and stuff like that, and I have to correct that. And so, but I can't be like boy, bah, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's he's 19 months old. 19. He won't still want to say that. He's 19 months old. So I mean, what what's that gonna do if I if if I did that? If I you know backhand him, you know. That's not love. Now, if he get older, you know, he, he grown and we tussling and whatnot, then that's a different story. We, we ain't there yet. <laughs> but I have to have more mercy to him because he's he's younger, so he's growing up. So through him, I'm learning more mercy. Through my wife, I'm learning more mercy. I'm learning more grace. I'm learning more patience because y'all, you know, if you got children or not, you know you got to be patient. But more so if you have children, you definitely know you got to be that much more patient. So... I mean, again, the hardest thing to deal with is in our marriages is, is is myself. So hopefully y'all understand what I'm saying. Not not you know like, oh my gosh, he's a bad husband and nah, I treat my wife as the queen as the queen she is. He does. But um Yeah. I thank the Lord for you. Thank you for you too. <laughs> David just woke up, by the way. But I think he's still sleepy. I think he just woke up because we're sitting still. Yeah, and it's kind of hot. And it's hot in yeah. here. Um, I did want to make another point that that's probably hard. I, I don't know if this is number one, number two, but very a very hard thing in marriages today. And it's probably been since the beginning. You know, I'm not going to say it's a new thing because there's nothing new under the sun. But, um, but sin. Sin is probably probably the biggest reason for failed marriages, you know, seeing on either part, husband, wife, you know, speaking from a, um, a wife perspective, wives can cause their marriages to fail from not, from not submitting, you know? And I think it even, even before that, even before, <laughs> and <laughs> even, <laughs> Eat means food. E eat means press milk. Yes. Yeah, one eat. E eat. He says food too. Yeah. If he if he wants food, he'll say food. But if he says eat or eat eat, he's talking about breastfeeding. But um what was I saying? Sin. I was saying sin. I was saying even before even before the 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 marriage happens, even before, you know, they get married and a wife Okay, baby. Okay. How you gonna hear me from back there? Guess you'll find out. Huh? It's real life. <laughs> We're in the middle of making a um, video. I was gonna say she has to get back here and feed David. Yeah, I was gonna say that the <laughs> David. I'm talking. <laughs> oh, you're sweating, son. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Oh, even be, even before two people get married, I think that sin being unequally yoked is probably a big reason that marriages. 
Yeah, excavator. Mm -hmm. Excavator. A big reason that marriages fail is because, you know, the Bible says that believers are not supposed to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And you see that so, so often where it's either, you know, uh, yes, excavator. You, you see either a believer and an unbeliever or an almost believer and an unbeliever. And when I say almost believer, I mean somebody that's been, you know, churched. They've been, they, they, they know the word of God. They know what the word of God says. And they still get with somebody that's not going to help them grow. They, they, they marry, they marry somebody that's going to, that's going to pull them further and further away from the Lord. Say for instance, say Kelson didn't marry me. Say he married somebody else that was not saved, but she knew, she knew what the word of God said because he's strong in the Lord and he's strong in, he's strong in the spirit. He could, he could lead he could leave the unsaved wife to Christ. He could, you know, and the Bible even says that, right? It said to, you know, to, um, to how do you know, old man, old woman, that you, uh, how do you know that you, that you, that you're not going to save them? You know, you might, you might be able to do that. I'm not saying to go and marry somebody that's not saved. I'm just saying if, if that was the case, that it'd be easier with somebody who, it would be easier with somebody who, whose heart has been softened, whose heart has been softened, and they want to be saved, versus somebody who's just, you know, who just faking the funk and they don't care. And maybe I shouldn't even talk about that in this video. But my point was, sin is a big reason for failed marriages. No matter how you slice it, whether it's adultery or it's fornication before y'all got married, or it's you know pride or you know pornography or you know the woman the wife don't doesn't want to be submissive she wants to be the head um sin sin is is very a very big cause of, of failed marriages so, that's my two cents okay come here and there you have it so it's getting kind of rowdy in here so we're going to go ahead and close it out um hopefully this would be one of many videos that we can do together talking about marriages, relationships, and uh, just different stuff. I know some of you, you said you wanted more videos like this in due time. So, hey, it, it worked your patience, too. So I know some of you are like, hey, I need to hear some of this stuff. It really helped me, and that's what I pray that these videos help you in your growth in the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, with that, God bless each and every one of you in Jesus Christ's name. As always, stay focused for Jesus. <laughs> And as you know, the truth is not debated, it is declared. We out.
Like I tried to hell, you a Christian Go to church, say the sinner's prayer You a Christian, stay getting high Getting throwed, yeah, Monday through Saturday Anything go, yeah Caught up in the world and left your first love Jesus died in your place, he shed his Precious blood, but you gotta be seen Pastor, apostle, wake up Church, time to go and preach the gospel 